All right, what is going on? We are going to jump into another spot that I think is obviously very common in game. I think it's a spot that a lot of people are going to make mistakes. I think it's a spot that it can be tough to study because everyone plays it somewhat differently, but you need to understand the principles that are going down. You need to understand the rules that apply to the ranges you want to play. So the spot is 30 big blinds, limp, blind versus blind, big blind raises, small blind calls. So limp raise call spot, 30 big blinds. It's a spot where um, I struggle with sometimes in the small blind. So I'm going to concentrate on a small blind play a little bit, see what, how we counteract having a you know, reasonably capped range when we limp call. Like, You'll, we'll show the, actually, I'll just jump in and I'll just show the ranges right now rather than talking about it without them there. So, small blind limps, 3x, 3.3x, and we call. So, how does our range look? As you'll see, we ain't got no pairs. I would actually trap aces here sometimes, so I guess, you know, a mistake. Um, we don't have a lot of ace x. They're all weighted to raising. Anything from ace 10 plus, ace 7 suited is just whacked in. Um, ace four, we keep it almost a pure weight. So yeah, we we've we some mixes on these. Um, naturally, we're going to limp call with pretty much all the suited hands. King Jack, King Ten are going to be excluded a little bit. Eight seven, I guess is him shoving. That's not something I would do, but I, I, I there it is. So, um, the offsuit stuff, uh, we will find some more limp shoves because. They obviously don't play as well. Um, and then the bottom of the deck, we're just not going to have it. Um, we're not going to have it. So I, I think I might have said we have a weak range, but I, I shouldn't have said that. We just have a somewhat capped range in terms of not having the very top. But we have a lot of suited broadways. We're going to do well. When I show you the other range, like you're going to see we actually dominate a lot of it because like we keep all these hands in. They're not going to be raising the suited variations of this too much. So we go in here. Um, obviously the very top, so like the king jacks, the king tens. The hands that they're not going to raise full, they're obviously going to be happy to raise call these ones, but if, if, if you have like queen jack suited, I think you could actually probably raise call, I think it'd be fine, but you know, you can't raise call jack seven suited, and raising jack seven suited, and then folding is just a little bit of a disaster, so we have a quite polar range, even these hands towards the top are mixes, and they're like, they're not you know, they're not used a lot. Um, the 2x, the 3x, this kind of component around here is going to be used a lot for bluffing. And you'll see, like, even down here, like, half the time we have 6 deuce, half the time we have 6 tree, half the time we have 7 tree. You know, all this stuff is going to be mixed in a lot. I probably raised these ones a little bit too much in game. Looking at them here, like, I, I'm probably raising 4 deuce 100% of the time. And I would uh, mix in some of this suit stuff as well. But as you can see, um, this is how the range looks after we have raised. Um, and we'll just play the spot. So I want to look how we counter uh, from the small blind. I want to look how often we check. Queen eye boards are, in general are going to be pretty good, but my hand is so terrible that I'm just going to bet. You know, it's, you know, sometimes it's that simple. You know, if we can just win with 9 tree here, it's pretty easy. Um, so the, we'll look at the like folding range. It, it's not folding a huge amount, but obviously this stuff that just absolutely whips the flop, it's gone. Um, you might be tempted to get involved with a backdoor flush draw with 10-4. If it's in a limp pot, you definitely are not going to get to fold these hands, but the range gets cleaned up a little bit um, by both players. So when it goes limp, three big blinds call. Like We don't need to like fight back here with, say, 10-4 spades because we have three to a straight and also... Um, a backdoor flush draw. So that's one thing that I've been guilty of trying to um, over defend in those spots slightly at times. So again, limp call. Queen Jack 5. Ah, this is such a good board for me that it might be a lead. Now, I have not played this spot in DTO in a while. I am going to lead it. I just think he's like, okay, it's not. Okay, okay. Um, are we leading this board sometimes? Little snippets, but you want to you, you wanna have a queen. So, we identified the board, but the hand just doesn't make as much sense. So, let's just uh, actually try this one again, because we'll get interesting down the streets. I would imagine that they have a reasonable amount of checking on Queen Jack 5, but we'll check that out in a little moment. Um, 
So, this is a tough spot. I would imagine, again, that we are probably meant to raise a very reasonable amount of queens at this stack depth and get them in. We don't really have too many ASEX once we check call and call the swap. So I think folding the jack down here is just impossible. Um, personally, I would never ever dream of folding jack 10 or king jack with a straight draw. And even like just a jack in general is going to be tough. It's a tough spot though. Very tough spot on the river. <sighs> Very tough spot. Honestly, this is a spot like I would call in game against someone who I thought was just out of line. Which some players are. Like, I'm gonna call here, but I, when the spade comes in, maybe we just need a spade. I'm gonna fold. I'm gonna fold. I changed my mind. But look at this, it's 4951. Like, if we have the Jack 10 um, with the spade, it actually, you know, it's, it doesn't make a big difference. It actually kind of folds it a little bit more, I guess. The tennis spade is just a premium buffer opponent. So unblocking that's not actually a bad thing. And that's somehow some, a way that I think about it wrong sometimes. But um, let's go to the turn here. And oh, sorry, let's go to the flop. Let's have a little look. Like, what are, what's our strategy when we have a queen? So we're raising these queen X. Just playing for stacks. All good. Um, I guess it likes calling the top two, a little bit of a slow play. Queen 10. It's interesting. Wait, is this the flop? No, no, this is versus bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's have a look at what we're raising. Ah, okay, sorry, I did it the wrong way. Apologies. Um, I looked at our calling strategy, which is what we did, right? Of course, I lost my little mind there for a moment. Apologies. So we raise in here. Um, yeah, this makes a lot more sense to me, to be honest, but I, I was just like, all right, well, I guess that we're trapping the top. No, this makes way more sense. These are hands, obviously, from the top of the deck down. Uh, we're going to be more confident raise calling. Um, I was very confused. But sometimes the bot does things that I'm not familiar with. And I was just rolling with it. I was like, all right. I guess that's what we're doing. But, you know, this makes a lot more sense. So, yeah, Queen X, we're raising a lot. Um, then on the turn, we see this bet. And this is our calling range. As you can see, so bet. So they go back. we'll just click here and look at our calling range. So obviously it's actually so we're actually folding, eh? We are folding with these weaker jack X that don't have a straight draw. I'm I'm just worried about I guess we have the weaker Queen X. I thought we'd be raised calling some more of them. Jack Tan's a premium call, like it's it's never ever getting folded. Like ever. Um but these Jack X we do start mixing in the fold. I'm a station man, blind versus blind, but I find everyone, everyone just blasts off. All right, all right. So I'm probably, I'm probably a little bit too sticky is what we can learn here. Um, A7-6, I'm just going to bet. Like we said, they don't have a lot of ASEX. Our suits are very good for it. I do wonder if we use this bigger size. I'm not going to use it with this hand, but like if I base king, ace, queen, do I just want to start really driving value in? My guess would be yes. Hmm. I don't think I have that much equity in my lower end of the straight's not that valuable, so I'm actually going to double borrow here. Alright, let's have a little look where we went wrong. It likes checking the turn a lot. Um, I, I, like, I like going for the more aggressive line, but it does like checking the turn. I think with the 10 of spades and the lower end of the straight draw, I'm okay with it. Um, does this size get used? Not really. Not really. So, one thing I do a little bit too often is maybe just betting big in a spot which makes it kind of easy to play against. Whereas if we bet the smaller size, it forces our opponent into defending like very awkward parts of their range. So if we look here, like they do not get the fold many queen highs. They do not get the, okay. So they don't just have the queen highs with the flush draws. Okay, so let's see about like queen jack though. Like king high, it's pure with or without a backdoor flush draw basically. King seven even, that's a pair. King eight, almost pure, close enough. Um, so yeah, you can just you can just put people in tricky spots with a small bet here where they get, don't have a huge amount of ASX. So we got them all right so far. Am I on a streak here? King Queen Trey. I'm gonna check, but I am interested again to see if there's leading. Um, I'm gonna bet. Um, I'm gonna bet.
that again on the small side. And is worth too much now. Turn I thought was very close to a check. And there is leading, look. These top pairs. These top pairs are like King Queen X and Queen Jack X. This is obviously way more prevalent. The King I board seems to have it a lot more. Interesting. A little bit of a butchered river, unfortunately. Okay. Okay. Um what did they thought? What's their checking range? Wow. Like that's a lot of checking, isn't it? On King Queen trade. Like if you open big blind defense. You're not checking this flop a lot from any position. It's just because we have so much terrible, terrible hands. Like, look at all this deuce X. Look at all this. Like, we can't just bet everything here. Like, whilst we're somewhat capped when we limp call, we don't have all this garbage. Like, we lose those terrible hands, right? So, definitely, definitely missing this in game. I'm not sure how everyone else is getting on. So, obviously, we've seen a lot of leading. I can't remember. It's a pretty much identical board. I think I'm going to check, but I actually won't be surprised if we can lead here again. I'm using this bet size. This is something I've been doing lately, and I'm trying to do more of these smaller bets on the turn. Uh, obviously, now we're folding. And I'm going to call the river, so. And... What? 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 We just have too many kings, eh? We just have too many kings. I just thought, like, I would have folded it without the diamond. Oh, it's the same thing again. The bluff is used with the diamond. This is obviously a flaw in my thinking about poker. I'm concerned about blocking the flush, but what in reality what I'm doing is blocking the bluff. Ooh. Mmm, look at all this. Alright. Alright, lesson learned. Think about it more, Finton. Think about the bluffs as well. Five tree deuce. I think we have a lot more of this than them. Given the way we showed the ranges work, we clean out this lower stuff. So I'm actually just gonna go ahead and bet small with 10 9. And we get raised and fold. It does like a check, it does like a bit of a bigger bet. I guess the bigger bet makes a lot of sense, right? Because these hands need a lot of protection, uh, and our opponent don't have like any two pairs, really. Maybe a few suited hands, but not a whole lot. Uh yeah, just small betting. I would mix this in game. I don't know if that's right, but it's what I'm gonna do. Hmm. I like this. All in feels thin. Alright. Again, let's see where we went wrong. Okay, so it actually likes checking the flop a lot here. These monotone boards for me are always tough. Monotone boards are very, very tough for checking on the turn it likes doing. Like spending sometimes and our sizes as greedy as we can get the all in just a little tin that makes sense to me um let's see like what do they call any yeah they're just not gonna fall with any king right yeah just seeing if they call any hands that are not pushes and given how the hand went the check on the turn they're gonna have to call some kings which which makes sense to me what are we on a two streak Ooh. Um, nine, seven, five, to me feels like a leady board. When you think about how their range looks, yes, they have the over pairs and I do not. But I feel like I have a lot more interaction on this board than they do. So I'm going to go for a lead. And honestly, I'm just going to bet small again. It's definitely getting to be slightly thin, but they have a lot of over cards, which we put in quite a tough spot with this small bet. So that's what I'm going to do. And we're going to win. Okay, so both of them are not the predominant play. I just want to see though if we have 9x, does it come in a lot more? Yeah. Comes in quite a bit more with 9x. This is obviously two pair. I thought 6 7 with the straight draw, it would be fine to slide it in. I wouldn't have done it so much without the straight draw. Okay. 
All right. Uh, this is not my board. This is just going to be a check phone. I want to check. Do we need to call like King Highs and stuff that don't have spades? I would guess so. Yeah. Like this, I think this is quite obvious that you can't just fold, given how wide the range is of the big blind. But it's still like it's tough. Like you look down at King Nine of Clubs, you've called a Trix Pre and it's Ace Eight Four All Spades. It's not the most natural thing in the world to want to click the, the call button. All right, let's let's play until this streak is done. Um, I think a pair is just not going to be a fold. I think that's quite standard. And yeah, now our hand, I would guess, is worth close to zero. I think I'm going to fold. Am I? Wow, we're getting a big price. Ah, the blunder. Not a blunder. Oh, not a blunder. Oh, I can just hear Dom's voice saying blunder. We have a pair, it's too small. I just don't have enough support if I fall to six. I'm the worst. Oh, I'm embarrassed. My face feels red. My cheeks are going rosy. Uh, sometimes I say I want to get tougher to play against the higher stakes. That's one of the main things I use DTO for. But I've been a little bit rusty post scoop. And this just shows me I need to get back in the lab. Ah, uh, your call. Every six. Don't even think about it. None of them. Uh, I feel like such a filthy nit. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Can I really end on a blunder? I just can't. I can't bring myself to end on a blunder. Ten eight five. I'm going to check. The 10 8 is very good for them. Um, I think it's fine. Obviously, now we could start betting. Probably a spot I would mix in game, but I'm going to bet this time. Yeah, I mean, they're both heavy mixes, right? It's a uh, check and bet on the flop almost 50 50. Slightly prefers betting the turn, but it's still nice to check and have some pretty much auto calls on the river. Um, Given most of our range, we'll start to look like Ace High and King High at that point. All right, let's try and redeem ourselves. I'm devastated we had a blunder. Do I make them fold any better, King Highs? No, never. I'm going to check. I'm just going to show it down. And I'm going to fold. I, I don't think you ever call this hand, but I, I just don't think so. I think I have so many Ace Highs. I have Rivered 6X. I have. Maybe some pairs that didn't bet. I'm gonna fold. Does it like calling here? All right, all right. It does like betting though. On the flop, maybe playing a little bit too passively in some spots as well. I assume though we got to call a chunk of a size. Yeah, that's what I would have thought, and that's what I would have thought we have enough of, and that's why I didn't need to call like something like king seven. Even something like king queen, king jack makes a lot of sense to me compared to this, obviously. Um, so yeah, pretty straightforward. Queen Jack Nine feels like a leading board to me a lot. I don't know if it's with this one. I'm gonna do it, but this 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 could be a mistake, and if it is, we're just gonna call it a day. <sighs> All right, let me see. How how are we bluffing with leading? Oh, we're not. We're just not really leading this one. So it was the King Queen X that was more of a lead than. The queen jack eight. I thought this, like when I look at their range um, for free flop, um, we'll just do this and we'll click here. Like they don't really have a huge amount of nine, ten. And we have, so, like they have what, point three, point three. We have pure weights on that. And then we have just so much interaction around this queen jack area that I thought maybe we could lead here, but I was wrong. I'm an idiot. I'm also heartbroken that I got a blunder. I just, I wasn't expecting to get any blunders. I very rarely get the blunders, I'm not gonna lie, but this one was pretty bad. We folded a pair, we showed we were weak. I hope that you got something from this video. I hope that you enjoy learning along with me. I'm not sitting here trying to pretend that I'm unbelievable at poker. I'm in the learning process as well. I'm trying to get to the point where when I'm in the games, 
some of the regs don't enjoy playing against me, which, you know, when you're folding a pair, buying versus buying for two small bets, probably isn't the case right now. But we will get there. Um, if you have any particular spots that you would like to see me play, please get in the comments. Please hit the subscribe button. Help support the channel. Help support DTO. Help support me. I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you again next week. Talk to you later. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to make sure that you don't miss out on videos like this one, please hit the subscription button. And on top of that, if you want to get in the comments and let us know what you enjoy, we would love to hear your feedback.